A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the cross, one of Jesus' final acts of love, as we see in the Gospel, before offering his life for us, was to make sure his mother would be cared for. We know that from this gospel account of John, who is the only evangelist, believe it or not, to record this particular moment, that he, the disciple, joyfully took Mary into his own home and loved her as an adopted son. And so Mary lived for years with St. John, who was an apostle, but also a priest. And because he was a priest, he celebrated the Eucharist. And I'm sure you never thought about this, but she, he gave her Holy Communion. So Mary was enabled to live in the Eucharistic presence of her son during those years in which she was separated from him. So she becomes a perfect model for our devotion to Mass and Communion. Because at every Mass, we receive Christ from the hands of a priest, just as Mary was privileged to receive her Eucharistic son from the hands of St. John. Jesus and his blessed mother were like two magnets, one big and powerful, the other small, but by comparison, less powerful. But these two magnets were attracted to one another. Jesus was her life, her sweetness, and her hope. Now, if St. Paul can say, for me is to live in Christ and to die in Christ is gain, then how else do we describe the longing of Mary to see Jesus again face to face after his ascension into heaven? I heard that they say that the souls in purgatory are on fire with the desire to see God. The greatest part of their pain and suffering comes from their insatiable hunger and their unquenchable thirst after the vision of God. So perhaps truly only a soul in purgatory could appreciate the longing of Mary to be able to see and to embrace Jesus again and to give us an adequate description of what it's like. Now, it was the longing on the part of Mary for union with God, which I think made her holy communions so pleasing to Jesus. Scientifically, it's a known fact that a stone which is dropped from an airplane will fall to earth with an ever-increasing velocity. In other words, the closer it gets to earth, the faster it falls because of the gravitational pull. And the, the attraction becomes stronger and stronger. That's why the speed of a falling stone increases with each second that it falls. Now, spiritually speaking, there's also a natural attraction which God exerts on every human soul. As the seconds of our life tick away, we should be moving closer to God. We should feel that attraction of God on our souls growing stronger. Now the saints felt it, and Mary felt it in a super eminent way. The closer a person is to God, the greater will be the attraction and the more sensitive that soul will be 
to God's love. So my question is, why is it that some of us feel that attraction so faintly as to seem not to feel it at all? And I think the answer could be in the manner in which we approach Holy Communion. Now, I know you might find this hard to believe, but there is enough spiritual energy there in one Holy Communion to make any one of us a saint. I mean, that's what our founder, St. Alphonsus Liguori, wrote. A single Holy Communion is sufficient to make a saint. When we are not saints, after we have received the Blessed Sacrament, is not the fault of the sacrament, but the fault lies with us. The spiritual energy, the grace that comes from such a reception of Holy Communion, we absorb only in proportion to our dispositions at the time we receive. So if I'm coming up to Communion as if it were a typical routine Sunday, and I've got all sorts of distractions on my mind, and I'm watching everybody else who's going up in front of me or those who are beside me, well, the degree to which I am open to receiving Jesus is limited because I'm not prepared. So some proportion exists between our preparation and thanksgiving of Holy Communion, and the grace that we receive from the Blessed Sacrament depends upon how we are prepared and how grateful we are after we have received it. A hunger and thirst for our union with Jesus will result in us making a good preparation and faithful to thanksgiving. Because from experience, we learn that little or no desire in receiving Holy Communion will result in no preparation and only a minimum of thanksgiving. In return, we should not be surprised that in our receiving of the Blessed Sacrament, that that divine grace that abides in that sacrament is limited in its power because we're not open to what it can do for us. Now, why is that? Well, what's so important to realize is that in this matter, as in all matters, God has given all of us a free will. And if that's the case, he will not force us to prepare to receive him, and he will not force us to thank him for his unspeakable gift after we have received it. It's very much like the 10 lepers that were healed. Only one went back. Even God's grace does not take away from our free will, nor does it perform miracles. The grace of God operates when and only when we cooperate with it. St. Francis de Sales describes the relationship of grace and free will and their mutual cooperation in our good works, and this is what he writes. Grace is so gracious and so graciously seizes our hearts to draw them, that it in no way offends the liberty of our will. Grace has power not to force, but to entice and to draw the heart. It acts strongly, yet so sweetly, that our will is not overwhelmed by so powerful an action. It presses us but it does not oppress our liberty, so that under the very action of its power, we consent to or resist the movements as we wish. My brothers and sisters, ask God for the grace to hunger and thirst for Holy Communion like Mary. And through Mary's intercession, ask her for the spiritual help that we can make a better preparation and thanksgiving on our part with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. On our part, let us resolve to cooperate with the movement of grace constantly stirring in our soul.